Just want to show you a few things about the horse area inside of this trailer. Again, it's not a double D trailer, uh, not necessarily a competitor. It's just another manufacturer, and our goal at this factory is to educate customers on options and various styles of manufacturers that a lot of companies use. The first thing to point out, this is not a safe tack design. This is a conventional rear tack style. Uh, the problem that we have with this, first of all, a lot of horses do not like the load through this small and narrow door. If you take a look at our safe tack video, you'll see what I'm talking about, uh, the advantage that the safe tack provides. So uh, this is a problem for us as a manufacturer. We don't like this. The other thing is when you're trying to load your last horse, there's not enough room for you and the horse to get up in here because this wall is in the way. So it does create a safety hazard for you and the fact that how are you going to get up in here and then safely escape back out. So that's another concern. And then finally, as far as loading, uh, this, is, this is fairly common in the industry. You see a lot of companies will use a butt bar or a pad or something. Uh, the problem that we've seen with these and the safety issue, because we used to build them the same way, is first of all, this doesn't reach. So this particular manufacturer, you have to pull it. It's on some sort of a spring-loaded system, and it takes two hands. So you're, I'm trying to line this up. In the meanwhile, my horse is trying to back back out on me. And, of course, you can hear all this noise as I'm moving around. Dividers and different things are clanking, which is not good. It creates a lot of additional stress. We'll show you an alternative way at the end of the video, uh, just a quick solution on how to get around this. Be aware of these things. Before we move on to inside the trailer, again, this is a conventional rear, rear tack style. I like the saddle racks, those are nice. Uh, again, the problem is if you have a horse that's hard to load and we have the safety factor uh, or the danger, potential danger, of not being able to get in and out safely. So this tack is in the way, it needs to go, and there's not an easy way to get it out of here. Uh, often manufacturers will offer a collapsible rear tack, but again, you have to remove all the saddles, collapse the walls and everything else to get the tack out. And even on this design, this whole center post would come out. And it's not very tight, it's kind of a, a rattly post. Let's walk on inside. You can step on up in here if you want. I want to make sure we have good light. Okay, uh, we're inside of a three-horse slant load, all aluminum trailer. Uh, this is not a double-D trailer. This is just to show you guys uh, how a lot of trailers are made and give you some pointers on things to be aware of. The first thing to point out in this trailer is it has what's called as a mill finish roof. Now, mill finish, this is very thin stuff. Mill finish is the natural color of aluminum. It's the shiny stuff, no paint. Uh, it reaches a temperature, particularly during the summertime, of 185, 191 degrees. Water boils at 212. And so in the testing and the research that we've done, we found out that we're really just baking our horses while we're driving. Uh, using a, a roof style that's insulated or something alternative uh, other than this mill finished roof would be a great solution. Unfortunately, we have seen when a horse spooks, we've seen horses go through this mill finished stuff because it's really thin material. We're probably in the 60 degree range on temperature here today, and this roof is hot enough. I, I can't, I can't hold my hand to it. So I don't have a temperature gun with me. We ought to do that, but it's it's a hundred and some degrees for sure. Okay. The other thing to point out, the way a lot of trailers are made, one of the things I noticed in this trailer, there's not there's not any pads. I'm not very happy about that. Uh, we like to have nice thick handmade padding or really thick pads of some sort to protect your horses while you're driving up and down the road. We like that in this trailer. Another uh, thing that I personally like and that a lot of our customers request are barred or tubular head dividers. And the purpose behind that that we hear, first of all, if I close off this divider, you'll see it starts to get really dark up here. I close off all the light. We have small windows. This is a really small window in this trailer. We have small drop downs on the front. Uh, this is not a white finish. 
it's a mill finish which is less expensive and so we're really lacking in a lot of lighting here and when I close this divider off I'm, I'm removing a lot of potential light for our horse and what that does if we're not careful is we'll just increase the stress factor because we're starting to walk our guy into a dark tunnel and we don't want to do that so a tubular or a bar head divider would certainly help there uh, you can also get a lot of additional airflow uh, if you have a tubular or a barred head divider. This is a slam latch, or supposed to be one, and I apologize for the noise. You have to slam it really hard, and it's quite difficult to open. So you want to make sure that your divider latches are easy to open and close, one hand operation, and that you can close these latches. And of course, we're also looking for vibration. As we're going down the road, there's a lot of movement that takes place in a trailer. We want to see how much vibration goes on. And unfortunately, with this style, there's a lot of noise and a lot of vibration, which can, excuse me, really increase the stress of your horse. Okay, rubber wall lining. We can get a shot of that. This is probably in... 90% uh, of trailers being manufactured today. The fact that we say it's rubber makes a customer think or it might would make you guys think that it's soft and it's safe and all those things. Unfortunately that's not the case. Uh, this is very hard. It takes a really stiff backing plate behind this rubber. If you get a close-up of this side right here you'll see that it's only 3 16 of an inch thick. That means it's less than a quarter of an inch. And what happens is in the sunlight, once the uh, sun hits it or the temperature expands, because it's rubber, it will expand, or excuse me, the temperature increases, the rubber will expand and contract due to temperature change. And what we've noticed is that a lot of times a horse on a long trip, they like to paw. If you've got a guy that just loves to stand there and paw, and we have seen horses paw the rubber off the side of the trailer. Unfortunately, when that happens, you end up with a mechanical fastener. A bolt head, a, scrivet, a, a rivet, or a screw is exposed, and we see horses get cut on that. So an ulterior or an alternative wall liner, something that's safer other than, the, than this rubber, would be a, a great solution. We offer a technology at Double D Trailers called Safe Kick. So you don't have to worry about a horse pawing on the side. Uh, if he kicks it, it actually absorbs the impact of uh, the kick and is much safer on your horse's leg. So something to take a look at. Last area we want to take a look at in this trailer is the aluminum floor. Now, if we get a close-up, this trailer is just here for service. It's not our trailer. We added a ramp to it. But, can you get a close-up of that, Brian? Do you see it? I don't know how well it'll show up on the camera. But there's an area of white right here. And what that is, you can see that on my finger, it's oxidation or rust. Now, most folks think that aluminum doesn't rust. Uh, we may get a misconception or confused in thinking that because you have an aluminum floor or an aluminum trailer, it's going to last forever. That's not the case. What happens is uh, horse urine is very acidic and the acid that's inside the urine, it will react with this floor and it will cause it to oxidize and eat a hole in it. Nothing to panic about as long as you pull the mats out, keep the floor clean. It's very, very important on an aluminum floor. It's crucial that you do that. This trailer is not very old and we're already seeing oxidation on it. Uh, the other thing that we notice is because that uh, aluminum is a great conductor of heat. Remember the roof, how hot it is right now. Uh, we also see a significant amount of heat and noise and vibration that comes through this aluminum floor. If we were to drive this trailer up and down the road and you bring it back and do a temperature test, you'll see a significant amount of heat that gets trans transferred through the aluminum uh, simply because of uh, it's just a property of aluminum. It will transfer the heat quite well. So if you can use a floor other than aluminum, uh, we certainly promote wood floors. A lot of folks are scared that wood floors rot. Uh, we don't see that. In a fully enclosed trailer, we've got floors 15, 20 years old, and the key to it is maintenance, just like with anything else. An alternative floor is a product called Rumber, uh, like lumber with an R, R-U-M-B-E-R, 
it has a lifetime warranty it's made from recycled tires and you don't have to have a stall mat so you never have to drag these mats out to keep your floor clean so find a trailer with a wood floor or a rumber floor is a great alternative as to using something with aluminum now the last thing another thing I want to point out uh, would be the side sheets on this trailer and this is something that that most folks aren't going to pay any attention to and I'm not sure how well it shows up on the on the camera but what we're looking for is sheet warp or sheet buckle now what happens is uh, a lot of manufacturers will use a bolt or a screw or a rivet just like what we have here and once the sunlight is really sunny today uh, once the sunlight hits this sheet it will cause the sheet to expand or contract at a different rate than what this post does because this is thick this is really thin and so if we have a rivet or a mechanical fastener every four inches the sheet can't move it can't expand uh, but the sheet does move and so it goes to the path of least resistance which is just going to buckle in and out this particular trailer doesn't have bolts or screws or rivets which I like because you end up with a nice smooth surface they also don't caulk their seams which I like because caulking is a just a dirt magnet and we'll show you that in a few minutes uh, unfortunately they didn't do anything on the structural uprights here and you can see the sheet move in and out there so I'm not sure if they use a glue here or if they use uh, a tape or a chemical bonding process but we're definitely seeing some buckling on this trailer I want to show you what a trailer looks like that has caulking on the sidewall so we'll walk over and look at it 